and you are watching Influence Media, PSI TV, the Netflix of biz brands. Leaders, a lot of you are not showing up in your full power because you have tons of insecurities. This is part four in a five part series on common insecurities that stop leaders from showing up at all or showing up and shrinking. So we have already covered the pretender, the imposter syndrome, if you will. Then we looked at the fear of failure. And then we talked about that inner harsh critic. Well, today we're going to be talking about how body image is affecting some of us. Well, maybe it only affects me. So maybe I'm the only one projecting, but I'm assuming I'm not the only one with this problem. So I figured that I would invite some other experts to speak into this topic. So today I have with me Erin Mathis, and she's, she co-founded the Style Core and the Your Million Dollar Look coaching program. She helps women in midlife, and if they work with her, they leave that experience with an overhaul of their style so they can confidently show up stunningly confident. Then we have Andrew Brown. And Okay, this is what I see. I've watched a bunch of his videos. For me, Andrew is the male version of the girl next door. Just wholesome <laughs> and so sweet with his family and everything. And he is so relatable. And when you watch his videos, you just feel like you're part of that Sly Fox family within just a few videos. So with 1.6 million subscribers on that account, Andrew created yet another YouTube channel and he shares YouTube growth hacks with his audience. So welcome, Andrew. And then we have Alicia West. She's actually my fitness trainer. Alicia loves fitness more than she loves her real estate career. The one that actually pays her bills, okay? She loves fitness that much. And it goes to show that you can actually have a career that funds your passion till your passion funds your life. Alicia has that dream body and she does it so effortlessly because she loves fitness. She also has a bullet for a mouth because she's going to shoot straight and she's going to shoot hard. Okay. So if you're not into tough love, Alicia is not a trainer for you. So welcome ladies. Welcome, Andrew. Thank you, Trudy. Happy to be here. Thanks. All right. Fantastic. Thanks for having me. For those of you who know, I'm the host of C of PSA TV, and I'm doing my doctoral work in my research is in influential reach. So this is very important, guys, because you CEOs need to show up and shine. You have something amazing to bring to the world, and not showing up is not an option. And showing up and shrinking is not going to do justice to the message that you bring to the world. So this is why we're doing this series, and this is why I have these experts on to share with us. But I do want to say up front, Erin does have a, a gig that she needs to leave us for. So if she does leave us, no sweat, no worries. I know she's going to bring her A game and we'll really get a lot out of this while she's here with us. So to recap, this series has been on the five common insecurities that are blocking leaders from showing up or if they show up, they shrink. And Hollywood beauty standards have permeated society as the standard by which many compare themselves or compare others. So Erin, I'm going to start with you. What would you say are some of the comments that you hear from your clients as they talk about themselves concerning how they feel about their appearance? A lot of the women I work with specifically in midlife uh, don't feel great about how their bodies have changed and they've gained weight in midlife what used to work doesn't work anymore. So they're kind of always there. They just don't feel good in their clothes mm -hmm. and they keep waiting to lose the weight to get in shape before they're going to invest in their style and their war well, their wardrobe specifically. So it's kind of a vicious cycle because then they don't have clothing that fits and feels great on their current bodies. And they're waiting to lose the weight, but they um, then they don't feel great. So I really like to help my clients love the body they have right now. Sure, if you have fitness goals, that's great. If you want to lose weight, that's fine. But let's love the body you have right now. 
and dress it in a way that balances and harmonizes with your coloring, your shapes, your lines, your face and accessories so that when you do put on clothing and put yourself together, you feel this sense of confidence and pleasure. Like, wow, this looks really good. And uh, I know that for myself in midlife, I had gained some extra weight and I decided to give myself a makeover at my current size with, you know, 30 extra pounds. And it just shifted things for me. It gave me this new inner confidence, this new outer confidence, kind of the wind that I needed to, to shift my career. And ultimately within a year, I lost most of that weight because just loving my body as it was the different, you know, fuller version uh, made a big difference. Well, I'm going to say I have a per a thing that's in my head because of course I was slim. And then as I got older, I put on the weight and I've always said, I don't want to buy fat clothes. Mm. I don't want to buy fat clothes. And, and that's why I say I may be projecting guys. So I have a few pieces that I, you know, I have to go out into the world. I just have to, because mm -hmm. I'm not going to not build my business. So I just had to make the mental decision. The world's just going to have to deal with me because I have to deal with the world. So I do go out in the world and I have some pieces that I will feel comfortable in, but I will admit that there are lots of times I've decided not to go somewhere because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I don't like how I look. And it's yeah. not, and, and I, or I don't like how my clothes fit and something that fit me fine last week, all of a sudden I put it on, I just feel, uh, so absolutely. I know for me, body image impacts me. Now, Andrew, you shared something with me before, and I want you to say it for yourself because I don't want to speak for you. Tell me, dude, what you're thinking. <laughs> well, I can relate to that, to be honest with you. Um, there's been moments where I filmed like entire videos, um, or like, let's say it's like a day at the beach with the kids or whatever, or at the pool and there's certain moments where I'm like, Oh, I'm like so self-conscious or ashamed or, or for a while, like my arms were like, like skinny, but I still had like a belly, you know, like those types of things that like that's run through your mind. It's like, I'm like in my head, always telling myself, it's like, Oh, skinny fat, skinny fat. Right. Um, like I had like both. Right. Um, I think even when I originally talked with Alicia, I told her the same thing. I was like, Alicia, I got to get rid of this like skinny fat thing, you know? Um, and, uh, but to go along with what you're saying is like, I've, I've done videos. I'm like, I can't post this. Like, I'm not yeah. going to post it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Where it's like, I showed up, I, I did the video, I did those things. And I'm like, I can't post this because I'm so embarrassed of how I look, you know? And then it goes through your head. It's like, now it looks like I don't care about myself. I don't care about my health. And in reality, kind of along with what you were saying earlier too, like I wasn't probably doing all the things that I could or should be doing. Um, so really there was only myself to blame but I didn't want to accept that. Right. I wanted to just be like, Oh, you know, it's like genetics or all these excuses I could come up with. Um, you know, but in reality, at the end of the day, it was all those things that just made me feel more like subconscious and insecure about it. Um, and then therefore affecting my business, right. Cause my business or my product is like showing up consistently with videos. Um, you know, and that's kind of where, where it was for me. Well, what Andrew just said is super real guys, because I can tell you as a fact, I have made videos where I, I love the content of what I said. I got the message across the way I wanted, but I had <laughs> the face looked extra fat that day or the belly was showing or something. And I'm like, I'm not posting it. And it does affect us showing up. It absolutely does. So now, I, Alicia. I was going to say, I was going to say, I work with a lot of business entrepreneurs and leaders and business people. And they they do hold back from leadership opportunities, from showing up, from going on social media, which they need to, to build their audience, um, from being a public speaker because they don't feel good about how they look. So it really becomes critical that people at a certain point invest in that side of their lives and say, I need to feel good about how I look in the body I have right now. And when you dress in a way that's harmonious, that's visually balanced, even no matter what your size, you can look lovely and beautiful and attractive. So yeah, it's a common issue. Alicia. Um, I would say that I've been on the opposite side of the spectrum to where I was always super skinny um, and wouldn't wear shorts for the long. I didn't wear shorts for the longest time, like through school. Cause I didn't, I had bony knees. 
and I didn't want anybody to see. So I didn't like, I didn't, I didn't try out for cheerleading or anything like that. Cause I was like, Oh my God, you're going to my knees. <laughs> um, but it's, it's very, very interesting because at the end of the day, we never view ourselves. It's interesting. We never view ourselves from like our perspective. We're always trying to view ourselves with others in mind. Right. And, you know, one of our mentors teaches this where he says, like, people don't view you from their eyes. They view you from your eyes. Mm -hmm. So the natural self-hatred that we can have for ourselves. And unfortunately, that's exactly what it is. It, it turns into this level of self-hatred because we have been told what beauty is. Every beauty magazine that you pick up is going to tell you why you're not beautiful. And it's the most contradicting thing you, when you really, really think about it, it's just like, oh, it's a beauty magazine. Oh, I'm really not that attractive. And <laughs> it's just like, we're molded into this place to where like, naturally, like as consumers, we're, we're taught to not love ourselves, but from big business, it's just a marketing standpoint. And in reality, we get so locked in on the external factors that we never truly cherish like the internal things that truly make us shine. And I've learned throughout the years to focus on just being a good person and loving people because you just never know how many people are actually struggling with that. Right. Well, that's so. Well, Alicia, decades ago as a younger woman, and I, I know many fitness trainers who have disclosed body changes to keep up with the industry mm -hmm. expectations, kind of just piggybacking off what you just said. Is that still an issue for fitness trainers today? Absolutely. Really? It is. <laughs> Absolutely. Wow. And I think it just, it once again, it, it depends on how you view yourself, right? There are some individuals that are out here because once you understand that not everybody is meant to resonate with you everybody's definition of beautiful is different and somebody is going to find one individual appealing because maybe they have bigger biceps than they have or bigger upper body than they do a lower body and another person is going to choose a trainer that has a larger lower body than an upper body and at the end of the day it's just being able to step into your own space and love who you are and and focus on what you're good at and trust that the people that are meant for you will come to you but there are a lot of individuals who very much still struggle with that. But they are representing as if their body is as beautiful as it is, but they've actually gone under the knife or something. And, and, the, and then they don't really admit it. So they give the impression, am I the only one? I mean, they give the impression that they have accomplished this beautiful body yes. with all the fitness and exercise they preach. And that's not really the case. Oh, absolutely. You're speaking in regards to that. Yes. Um, so we're in a microwave society, right? And oftentimes, once again, the outside world often tells us what the standard is and individuals succumb themselves to said standard, regardless of what it is that they've had to put themselves through. And you'll see it more often than not where girls will disappear for months at a time and come back out and be like, I've been working on my body. It's just like, I just took all my pictures and videos down. Don't worry about me. Just been in the gym. <laughs> <laughs> so, Andrew, I watched several of your videos. And in those videos, to me, to me, the outsider looking at you as you present yourself on video, you appear to be in shape. Maybe it's that skinny fat thing, but I didn't see it. You appear to be in shape. You're a good looking man. You're pretty handsome. You're successful. But you just shared with all of us that body image is still a concern for you. Okay, so you've shared it's a concern. Why is that still a concern? And what are you actively doing about it? Since we're talking about body image, are you actively doing anything about it? I am. Uh, um, working really hard, actually. Been lifting every single day which has been great. Um, of course, we got Alicia, who is, she's, you know, she's my, my, my digital coach. Um, and she's, she does push you pretty hard. And if you don't, she will shame you on Instagram. <laughs> so I appreciate that. You know, I love Alicia so much. <laughs> Do you now? <laughs> Do you now? But yes. <laughs> um, thank you. I appreciate the fact that you, you thought that I looked like I was maybe my clothes, my oversized clothes were hiding it, but, um, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. And I hate to say that this is just purely an appearance thing, but in reality, ever since I was young, um, I was always like, like tall and lanky. Right. Um, and the words that I think that pe people say things like, um, scrawny or, 
um uh, what do they call it like recently some older some of my older friends like my peers were saying some stuff you know a few months back um lanky you know like things like that and um i just hated it right and i was like yeah and i was like no i'm not you know but in reality it's true um as i got older right your testosterone levels drop as a man right um and even though like i would try to lift occasionally um it just was consistent right it was it was just never ever ever consistent um i was never consistent with it and um you know with the commitment right like you got to commit up front is the conversation that we were having um and, and i wasn't committing right i wasn't committing to be able to stay consistent so um in terms of, like even like the youtube stuff like i would never like i'm the last person to take my shirt off everywhere it's been this way for my whole entire life even at, even as a teenager like my friends would take their shirts off and and I, I was in um, sports, but I played soccer. So my upper body was always kind of small, right? Whereas my lower body, my legs were always like my best feature, right? Is what people would say. So I was like, okay, like that's the only feature I've got really. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it was just my legs. So um, after I started, uh, you know, obviously I chatted with <laughs> Alicia and we started working on some things. She put together this whole plan. So I've been lifting and I don't, you can't, you can't really see it, but like, even like, even through like, I feel better in my clothes, like the muscles are starting to show up my shoulders, you know, my, my arm and, you know, all those things are like starting to really set in, like I'm getting wider, which is what I wanted. Um, so my goal was like, Hey, for this is just a personal thing. Like I'm not projecting this on anyone else, but my personal goal with this whole thing was like, I want to be so comfortable in my own skin, you know, that I could be the first guy to take my shirt off and not even think about it. Right. Not even because I'm like, oh, I want to show off and I want to boast or, or whatever. It's like, I'm like, yeah, I am proud that I've been working really hard, to be honest with you. Like, I genuinely am. But at the same time, I'm like, I want to be able to be like out with my family or out with my kids or whatever, and then take the shirt off and not even think about it, right? Where it's just like, hey, that's just real confidence, right? It's just confident because I'm confident in who I am. Not that the appearance has to do anything with it, but for me, it's overcoming this insecurity that's held me back for so long that now I'm like, F this, like, I'm not going to allow this to hold me back anymore. Um, you know, do some things like boosted testosterone, change my diet, um, like all of these things were massive changes for me drastically, right? And then I started feeling better. And then those things start falling off as you take this step toward, in my opinion, health, right? So it's like spiritual, mental, physical um health is kind of what I'm what I'm after, right? And um, as that those types of things grow, like even like I got a vlog who that's coming out maybe tonight to, today or tomorrow. It's the first vlog I think ever that I've really actually walked around with my shirt off. Right. And and not to say like, I still have my little dad bod tummy and stuff. And that's, that's been a lower, a, a slower process, but like, I felt good enough and confident enough. Like, Hey, my shoulders are looking better. My upper body is looking a little bit better. Like, why not? I might as well be real and let people see the transformation too, you know, to help other people. And then I have other dads who reach out they're like, dude, that's so cool, man. You're like working on the dad bod and all that stuff, you know? So I was like, okay, cool. Like people can relate to the fact that I'm not perfect. It's still a normal body, but it's at least to a point where now I can feel comfortable in my clothes and feel comfortable if I'm at the beach or whatever. Am I the only one hearing a few breaks in Andrew's sound? You're hearing it too? Mm -hmm. Okay. It's not bad, but just I just want to let you know I do hear it. But I want to oh. jump on this point. What Andrew shared, and a lot of it is how I feel, but you, did you hear the overcoming and the transformation even in his voice? I mean, it's like, this is this is what I want this show to do, guys. I want that when you watch this, that if you're feeling anything like what Andrew shared or what I shared earlier is that you still know you got to show up. You're still going to do it. You're going to find that way, whether it's you get some nice clothes or you start to work with a trainer or you do whatever it is Shift your mindset, shift your whatever, shift your outfit, shift your closet, shift your, shift whatever. You've got to take the action that's going to put you on the path to feeling better. So now this is open to the floor. Looking thinner and being healthy are not the same thing. Do you think the pressure to look thinner creates an uptick in healthy behavior or unhealthier choices? What do you guys think? Go ahead, Aaron. <laughs> okay, so I want to make sure I understand the question. The pressure to be thin, does that increase our healthy behavior or decrease it? Is that the question? Or, or move us towards an unhealthy behavior just so that we can look thin. Some people Yeah, stop I think forever. overall, I think overall it's it's unhealthy. Yeah, that pressure to be thin because not everybody is meant to be thin. 
you know, some, some bodies are naturally thin, some are naturally full and voluptuous and large and curvy. And, and so, um, yeah, I think that trying to fit into society's ideal, it really, it can lead to unhealthy behaviors and it just puts a pressure on that's not good. I mean, I have a teenage daughter and I just think she's, you know, I'm uh, obviously subjective, but I think she's beautiful and perfect. And she thinks her legs are too skinny, you know, <laughs> and um, it's just, um, why do you think that? Because the magazines, you know, right now it's like a fuller, fuller leg. So she's working out to try to get more muscle, which that, I mean, that's not an unhealthy behavior. I think that's good. But um, I just always encourage people to just embrace the body type you have and then just get healthy within that, within that type, you know, get strong for yourself, eat good. So you have good energy, you know, do the hormone therapy replacement or whatever, which I heard you talking about, Andrew, I, I do that as well. It's been really helpful. And uh, the meditation, the mindset, the exercise, a lot of that is just for mental health too. And, and then it all adds up together. Yeah. Alicia, are you seeing unhealthy choices or I know you're not making, you're making sure your people aren't doing unhealthy things, but what? <laughs> I really just think it depends on the approach um, and your willingness to become the person, right? If you're, if you're chasing after the body in and of itself, it can lead you down a road of deterioration because you're willing to do things that are compromising to your body and to your health for the sake of having the outcome versus you seeing a desire that you want to move towards and saying, you know what, how can I become the person that will then allow that aesthetic that I desire to be the out or to be the, the byproduct of the things that I'm doing? Is this something of where I can eat better or can I make more conscious choices and start eating with love, right? So one of the bigger, the mind, one of the mindsets that I believe are one of the healthiest ones that you can make is when you say, I love my body and my body is deserving the best. So I'm going to intentionally choose foods that make me feel good because I am deserving of that. And naturally, you're going to heal yourself in the process. You're going to feel so much better. You're going to feel lighter. And you're going to lose the unhealthy weight because not only are you now removing the toxins that you've placed into your body, but you're also relieving yourself of stress because you're giving yourself a peace of mind. And I believe when you go at it from that standpoint, it ends up being this beautiful process. But if you're doing it for the sake of others or anything outside of you, it can, it can lead you down a pretty, a pretty terrible path. I think that's going to be a plus for the body positivity movement. I guess I'm hearing you guys say that that's a good thing. So um, what about the ex? To, to what extent does a leaner, and Erin, I'd love for you to speak to this, to a leaner and often healthier body speak to that personal confidence? I, Recording in progress. Uh, I started. So you're saying, can, can you rephrase that Let me read the question, question again. Yeah, let me yeah. read it in case I have to edit that part. To what extent does a leaner and often healthier body speak to personal confidence? And I think I'm thinking like, you know, the clothes hang better or something. I don't know. What do you mm -hmm. think? Well, I mean, sometimes clothes off the rack fit easier when you're thinner or more lean or more like that uh, fit model for the different sizes, you know, proportioned in the way that they design clothes for. Um, the other thing is uh, confidence when you have a handle on your fitness and your self-discipline and your exercise. We'll come it's yourself. just an all around mental it's a boost it's a boost you feel good you're like i i'm taking control i'm you know so that that definitely helps confidence um but that being said i really don't push the people that i work with my clients i i'm not i mean i i always encourage them get healthy i'm i'm a big fitness person i'm really active i love fitness um and it's been huge for me not only for my physical health 
and not only for being able to fit clothes that I want to wear, but also for my mental health, because I have struggled with depression and anxiety in my life and uh, fitness and running. And it's really helped me a lot. So, um, but you don't think it's really necessary. So I'm just going to bring for confidence. No, not for confidence. I think that people can learn how to dress in a way, get their clothes tailored. They can create their beautiful confidence, attractive in any body type. I want to stick with that. And especially with you, especially in case we run out of time and you got to go. So Erin, as a style coach, you, I looked at your website, you have image transformations at before and at after with just a wardrobe swap, literally yeah. just a wardrobe swap. And, and hair and makeup. And, oh, and hair, hair and makeup, and makeup right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. they, they come in looking one way, they walk out feeling amazing. How do you make that magic happen? Yeah, we, um, I help a lot of different transformations. And the first thing we do is really tune in and help the client discover their style archetype. Who are you? What are your visual preferences? And how can you express that in your style? Because we want it to be authentic. So you feel when you're wearing your clothes and your accessories, you feel aligned with who you are and where you want to go. So that's the first step. And then we look at all kinds of things. We look at your color palette. What are the colors that make you look vibrant and alive and express your personality, your voice quality, the way you move? Maybe you wear really deep colors because you're a deep kind of person, or maybe you're super bubbly and light and so lighter colors are gonna work better. So we figure that out. And then we look at your body silhouette, your proportions, what are the styles? And we put together some outfits that really flatter and balance your body type. Then I'm, I'm a big believer that yes, clothes are good, but if you're a woman, it's, you know, how to use your makeup, how to apply it in a way that maybe makes you look five to 10 years younger. Um, and structured, I'm a huge- What about structured garments underneath? Yes. Oh, you mean like body- Like Spanx and stuff like that. Spanx. Yeah, I mean, for pictures, for special events, but on a day to day basis, people don't want to wear, you know, really uncomfortable. So let's just find clothes that flow over your body type that don't show what we call the hills and the valleys and all the little rolls, you know. So, um, so yeah, hair and makeup. And uh, for guys, it's grooming. I also work with men and do transformations as well. And you, you can't believe all these little details add up to create a transformation and it can be really dramatic. So if you go on my Instagram, Aaron style coach, and you just go down the feed and you start scrolling, you're going to see some of these transformations that are uh, really dramatic and it, it impacts the, their lives because they have this new confidence. They feel better. People respond to them differently. I've seen my clients, you know, finally attract and find their partner, step into new levels of leadership. They take that confidence into their life. And so Erin, when people go shopping for clothing, most buy what they like. They don't have mm -hmm. your expertise. You know, they should, they can consult with you, but they go shopping, they buy what they like. And some buy clothes just because it fits. They're just happy that something mm -hmm. will fit on their body, especially for larger people. But for the C-suite ex uh, executive, do you think that it's even more important that, do you, would you, what about the, the saying, the clothes makes the man? The clothes are a big part of it. I, it's part of the package. It's not the whole package, but the way you dress tells a story, whether you realize it or not. What is that story? What is that message? If your clothes are all too tight and you're kind of bursting out, the message is either you're too stingy to buy new clothes or you gained weight and you never took the time to like properly, you know, so there's, there's a message behind if your clothes are all really baggy, what are you hiding? Why are you hiding your body and your figure? Um, you want to have clothes that are tailored, that fit, that tell a story of how you want to be perceived. So that might be credible, trustworthy, a leader. There are actually techniques that you can dress that enhance your leadership quality. Uh, there are techniques for style that send the message that you are precise. You are trustworthy. When your clothes fit precisely, you convey precision. So it's just little things like that. The clothes don't make the man or the woman, but they are a piece 
of the package that tells a story and that helps you accomplish your goals. And I, but I think that that comes across because like you said, when the, the clothes are tailored and if you watch mm -hmm. any, any transformation, you know, people get into money and then they go and they get the tailor and it, the, the, the suit fits just right. The, the length of the, the pants length, it's just right. And all of that stuff the, I think that comes with the expertise, because when we just go shopping, you know, and we, whether we don't know we should, or we don't bother, or we don't have the money, or we think it's too expensive, whatever, we don't engage a professional like yourself, and we just go and shop, and we just go, and, and I've seen that, you know, like, probably the, the, the eclectic collection of things that just, you know, whatever, but anyway, that might just Yeah, be I mean, you might have a bunch of stuff in your closet that doesn't quite fit, and that's really common. I see people with too long pants, they're baggy at the ankles, that sends a message. So it's quite simple. You don't just, you don't have to spend a lot of money, find a local tailor. And then when you go shopping, you find a garment that is almost right. It, you know, don't spend eight hours trying to find the perfect garment that fits everywhere. Get a garment that you love, but maybe it's a little long. Maybe you need to take the waist in a little bit. Those are not expensive alterations. And then when you do that with your wardrobe, I have a tailor. I, I take all my, and I don't spend a ton of money. I can bargain shop and then I can take it to the tailor and you get it fitting just right. And it makes it, it elevates your whole look. It elevates that garment and your style because it fits you perfectly. Ladies and gentlemen, can we collectively agree or disagree that the body image positive or negative can contribute to how a leader appears in their organization? Is this a collective agreement, disagreement? What? Yeah. <laughs> Positive or negative, it is impacting you, right, Andrew? Yeah, 100%. Positive or negative, it, does it impact you, Alicia? Yeah. But mm -hmm. well, you always look so polished and beautiful, so I don't know. <laughs> and Erin, when did you came into this, you weren't always Miss Stylish Coach. So, yes, it did a, did a thing for you, too, when you found yours. Oh, for sure. Yeah, if you want to hear my story, I actually have a TEDx talk, and it tells my story, and it shows pictures of my first transformation. And it was actually from middle school to high school that I transformed myself and discovered the power of your image. So from that point on, I thought, oh my goodness, this is like a magic wand. We can actually use style and hair and makeup to transform somebody because my life transformed. I was this little shy, nerdy, like hardly had any friends in middle school, copying my mother's middle-aged style. It was not working. I was unhappy. And then I managed to pick up some style tips and some techniques. I grew my hair out. I got contacts, came to high school, still feeling pretty shy and insecure, but I looked so different. And the way people responded to me was kind of like, oh, wow, this is, you know, this is really exciting. So yeah, that was my, my start. And then I've gone through different transformations in my life at different career changes. I had a band, I was like kind of rock star style in LA. Um, and then, <laughs> yeah, had a band and then midlife had my babies gained weight was like, feeling kind of frumpy, had to do it, had to do another makeover. So yeah, when I was I've had my journey. Uh, I understand. I've been there. I have been there. When I was a, when I was younger, I was a model and people used to dress me and my niece is a, a model that runs the Paris runways and you know, the, it, they look beautiful in pictures, but they're not necessarily picking your style. They're just going for what they want the public to mm -hmm. know. Um, Alicia, whoever wants to answer this, um, what each, each one of you, would you give one or two tips, short tips for the listeners to, you know, either build an urgency for them to take some kind of action or uh, something that would help improve their confidence right now? Can you share anything, improve the urgency or whatever? Just share something. Alicia, start with you. Um, improve their confidence or get them to take action is that, yeah. is that what we're gonna, doing here yeah we want them to leave the show yes i'm gonna do it <laughs> i'm gonna do this what is okay. that so one of the things that i will say is that we all have an end goal 
right? And we all see ourselves in this light, whether that's making more money, whether that's being in a better position, whether that's being in a relationship that's healthy, that makes you feel good. Instead of separating yourself from that goal and from that person, visualize how it would feel if you were already there. Like already embrace that feeling for individuals who are in a space of where you, you feel this level of insecurity and you're telling yourself, if only I was fit, I would feel that much better. I challenge you to change that narrative and say, I am fit and start moving in that light. See yourself and identify yourself as that person here and now and watch your life change. Oftentimes the reason why we won't move in a particular direction is because we feel like it's detached from us. And it's hard for us to get into that position because we can't understand like I don't I don't know what it would be like to to feel fit. Okay, great. Go on YouTube, go on Google, And look at what fit people are doing and then just start doing, I'm not saying jump on 46 inch boxes because that's probably a little bit dangerous, but literally just go and buy yourself, you know, like an outfit that makes you feel encouraged, that makes you feel strong and, and like embrace that feeling and stop. I'm going to challenge that because I could not say I feel fit, but I can say I'm getting fitter every day. So I could probably go for it that way. Um, and I could probably talk that way, but I, I don't think I could say I am fit. That's, it. that's just me. But that's a, yeah, exactly. But that's I, what I'm saying though. Is like, I can vouch like, for that. I, d- I did that. I created a list of ma- mantras, mantras about like seven, six, seven years ago. And I started saying them every day. I wasn't really fit, but I, w- I said, I am fit and strong mm-hmm. every day and until, what did that I do be- for you, until I became fit and strong. I am now a person who prioritizes fitness in my life. And so these, these mantras saying it, visualizing it, it changes the pathways in our brain and helps us to move into that. So I definitely second that, <laughs> second that tip. Andrew, what do you think? Let me know if I, uh, is my audio working? My internet's You're kind of bad right now. Okay, okay, you just cleared up towards the Can end. Can you guys hear me all right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well. Is it working now? There okay, we are. we're good, yeah. Okay, so I'm losing a little bit here. But, you know, for me, I think, I think one big thing is to waiting for other people to give you permission to change your life okay so i heard um you say like someone like myself i did that a lot like say it's okay you can go do that you know um i think that is it working stop mm-hmm. waiting for people to give you permission is that what you said yeah 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 so if it's working out yeah so like stop waiting for people to give you permission to change your life um, because I feel like a lot of times we wait for that. And I, I used to do that all the time. It's like, Oh, I want to do this. But then I kind of had like, wait for like other people around me to be like, Oh yeah, you should do that. You know, like validation before I took action. Um, and I feel like when you take action and when you stick with it, it creates a lot more action. And then specifically with fitness, what I've experienced is that when you commit to it, you stick with it and you keep doing it, you end up loving it. And as you begin to, to move, move down that path, everything else kind of, you pull your entire life into this change. I literally am like on like uh, uh, Amazon and all these places like, okay, like what shirt is going to like make my bicep look better? And what, you know, what's going to, you know, like you start like taking yourself serious, right? So it's like you head in that direction with fitness. It boosts your confidence. When your confidence boosts, then your business grows, your relationships grow. And Alicia said this early on, I really truly believe that God brings the right people in at the right times. Or like, like if your energy, like there's certain energy, a certain vibe that you put out in the world attracts the right kind of people at the right time. And then that God will people who are supposed to be in your life, but you can't do that if you just sit there right? And you don't move. That doesn't happen, right? So until you create change, you start shedding off all this old stuff, then your life moves in a good direction. But it all takes breaking. You don't wait for permission, right? Say, I'm going to change my life. I'm going to improve my life and then stick with it. Take action. 
And I'll jump in here before I have to leave how my tip for how you can improve your confidence as a style coach is to take the time to invest in your style and your image. Even if it's just following a style coach, getting some of the free resources, if you don't have a lot of budget, go to my Instagram, Aaron Style Coach, get my free guide, your top five, my top five tips to improve and to up-level your style. But think a lot of times people don't give themselves the permission again to invest in that side of their lives. But I want to encourage that because I have seen it build the confidence so beautifully in my own life and in my clients. And you'll just be surprised how your image can not only change how you feel about yourself, but how others perceive you. And then the kinds of opportunities, connections, and relationships that you attract. So that is a huge, that's the tip that I would give. And with that, I have to sign off today, but thank you for having me. And uh, I look forward to seeing this episode. And there you have it, guys. We're we're actually done. Thank you so much for joining us. And Mm -hmm. I hope you're leaving this with some personal understandings of where you might be on this trajectory of loving yourself as you are or needing to take some action and and moving to improve that image so you show up and shine in your brilliance that you are. Trudy Verman here. Thank you, Erin Mathis. Thank you, Alicia West. Thank you, Andrew Brown, for being my fabulous guest today. PSI TV loves you for being with us today, and we want you to show up and shine. Trudy Verman here. Bye.